This video will discuss RIP version 2. RIP version 2 is very similar to RIP version 1, but it was developed to help address some of the problems with RIP version 1. Uh, RIP version 2 uses the hop count as its only metric, just like RIP version 1 did. Um, any routes advertised with hop counts greater than 15 are going to be considered unreachable, as the same with RIP version 1. Uh, something new here, though, is that messages are going to be multicast instead of broadcast. It will still be every 30 seconds, but in send, instead of sending those updates to the quad255 address, we will send them to the 224.0.0.9 address. Uh, this is a great benefit because not all devices listen to that 224.0.0.9 address. Only routers running RIP version 2 do. So that way um, other devices such as PCs, printers, or any other hosts on your network will not uh, get these updates. RIP version 2 also supports variable length subnet mask. Um, with this, we will actually send our um, subnet mask and our updates, where RIP version uh, 1, we did not do that. So RIP version 2, we can support variable length subnet mask, those discontiguous networks, and we will send our update, or excuse me, our uh, subnet mask along with our updates. Authentication is also available with RIP version 2. Uh, this was not available with RIP version 1. To set up RIP version 2, it's essentially the same thing as RIP version 1, except you have to add the version 2 command. So in global configuration, you would type router RIP, then your next command would be version 2, and then you would type in your network statements. Uh, again, only your directly connected networks, no subnet masks um, are needed. Uh, we have a new command here that we can use with RIP version 2. It's called redistribute static. This will allow you to redistribute your static routes with your um, RIP updates. So on your router, if you happen to have typed in some static routes and you want those static routes to be propagated to the other routers in your topology, you can use the redistribute static command. To verify RIP, we have the same exact commands we did with RIP version 1. Uh, so I won't go over this in a whole lot of detail. I'll just skip over it for now. If you want some more detailed information on this, you can watch uh, the RIP version 1 video. But we still have the show IP route, show IP protocol, and the bug IP rip. Here's the show IP protocol, just showing what uh, the output of what you would see if you entered in that command. This is the debug IP rip. Um, again, in real time, you can see your updates being sent and received. Rip version 2 supports passive interfaces, just like uh, rip version 1 did. Again, we want to turn our interfaces passive if uh, there is no need to send updates out them. If there is no router on the other end, there is no reason to send an update out that interface. So we want to make them passive. RIP version 2 will automatically summarize our networks just like RIP version 1 will. Um, these are a few rules that govern that. Um, again, I'm not going to go over that in detail right now. All that information I went over in the RIP version 1 video. Summarization does have some advantages. The main advantages are that we're going to use less bandwidth because our routing tables are going to be smaller and our routing tables uh, get sent in our updates. So we don't have to quite uh, send quite as much information uh, back and forth now. Summarization can be a disadvantage. Uh, it doesn't work with discontiguous networks. Um, with that, routing arrows can occur and it's uh, not going to work properly. So you can disable automatic summarization and that's something that I typically always just do. Inside of the router RIP configuration, you type no auto dash summary, and that will disable automatic summarization and uh, break out all the networks individually. You can still propagate your default route with RIP version 2, just like version 1, with the default information originate. This will take your uh, default route or gateway of last resort and it will send that in RIP's um, updates. Uh, last thing here is RIP version 2 does support authentication. Auth authentication can help prevent uh, routers with incorrect routing information from being brought on the network. Essentially with authentication, all the routers have to have the same password. And if a router were to, were to be brought onto the network without that correct password, we would not accept um, updates from them. So this can help uh, prevent attacks on our network or um, 
incorrect routers being brought on that network accidentally. Um, authentication configuration is not shown in this particular class. Um, it's shown in a security class, uh, but if you're interested in how to set it up, I did supply a link here, and you can click on that in the PowerPoint slides. Um, so that's it for RIP version 2. Not a whole lot has changed. Our main differences are uh, that we're going to use a multicast address, that we can support variable link, subnet mask, and authentication um, is supported. Everything else is very similar to RIP version 1. If you take a look at the, the curriculum for this chapter, it gets into a few other things, such as uh, the private IP address range, null interfaces, and loopback interfaces. Um, I would encourage you to uh, briefly read those, those sections and get a good idea of what that's all about. Thanks for watching the video.